Hi, and thank you for watching The Forum. I'm your host, Ashley Tate, here with my co-host, Christy Largent. And today we are going to be talking to some amazing organizations we have here in Shasta County, one of them being the Women's Fund with Denise Jorgensen, the chair of the board, the cabinet, actually. Yes. You guys, why do you guys refer to it as the cabinet? Let's just start with that. Because we are part of the Shasta Regional Community Foundation, and they have a board, so we can't oh. have a board. We have to have a cabinet. Oh, well, so tell us, what is the Shasta Women's Fund? The Women's Fund is a group of women that's a philanthropic organization, so we donate money back to the community. It's not just women. We have men members, too. And um, we raise funds through membership, and we are having a fundraiser t today and tomorrow, actually, um, about... Uh, so we raise money through memberships, and then we, we grant money back to organizations in the community. So what type of organizations do you grant this money to? And is it, it's kind of, it has a concept kind of like crowdfunding a little yeah. bit, right? It's like yeah, it's, um, yes, it's yes. collective giving. So I'm not one who can donate, you know, $10,000 right. to um, Channel 9. Right. But I can donate my 200 a year and my husband's 200 a year. And then the, the, through collective giving, we're able to give huge, not huge, but bigger amounts of money back to these organizations. Right. And we've given to... Um, Things like the one of my favorites is the last one we did was the video um, class at Channel <laughs> I mean at the Arts Council. Yeah, um, and it was young women and ended up there were women of all ages in the program, oh, <laughs> and, uh, including me, including, <laughs> including Christy. I and was the senior member. It, oh, wow. no, it, it <laughs> was. It was. I went to the the showing, you know, and yeah. it was it was really neat what 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 that money went to and yeah. to encourage these kids to do things, kids and. Women, women. Yes. and to do things like we're doing right now, right. You know, to do filmmaking, and yes. that you can do this, and you can do it in Reading, and right. that it's really was a neat program. Yeah. Another one that's one of my favorites is um, we do some dental work with uh, Community Health, and oh, they fantastic. restore women's mm -hmm. teeth so that they're more confident and they can get jobs or go to school. And it's that's and fantastic. that's one thing that's a real hallmark hallmark of the Women's Fund, and what you give to is that it's things that are very tangibly changing lives, mm -hmm. right? Like the teeth thing, I can't get over that because yeah, that was a, that was I loved incredible. hearing about that because mm -hmm. think about it if you had been drug addicted or we know what meth does to teeth we know what people who can't afford braces right. so their teeth get womper jawed and then they fall out and how could you go on a job interview right. when you're Feeling embarrassed to smile right. or talk yes. or how even more even along with that how do you go to your children's school and advocate for your child with their teacher when you're embarrassed to open your mouth right so something like that it just like really changes multiple lives it, it's just a really for me it's just a, a way that I can give back that I can see mm -hmm. the change in my own mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. I'm you know part of other organizations and, and I love them but you don't you feel like you actually see it and right. with these like this this tea thing which is is just an amazing thing now, can anyone join? Anyone can join. It's it's not a, a leaves group. Okay. Um, as I said, the memberships are two hundred dollars a year or a thousand dollars a year, and you can pay quarterly. and And I do that, and I have it automatically deducted from my checking account. I don't even think about it. So, how much is it quarterly if you're going to do? Uh, I think with the PayPal fee, it's yeah. fifty one dollars and forty three cents or something. Quarterly, like and that. then you're part of this collective, and right. it's. And, and you guys have an endowment. Can you tell a little bit about your we, endowment? The goal is to, well, the goal was to reach it by 2019, I believe, $500,000. We're at over $400,000 now. Wow. And um, wow. one of the events that we're, we've held are um, the money will go towards that. So that helps with that. And the goal with the endowment is that we then don't have to take the money out of our operating funds to do the grant making and that we can kick in more. We, we're, this year we're going to give $45,000. Wow. So, um, um, we'll be able to do even more with that. So it's pretty amazing that we've got to that point already. So when did the Women's Fund start? And I know oftentimes people will say, oh, no, not another nonprofit. We have so many nonprofits in Reading. What's the, what was the motive behind starting it? The, it started in 2008, and um, it was a group of women who, and that was right in the recession, so that was mm -hmm. a really rough time. But these mm -hmm. women decided that they wanted to give back to their community, and it, it, collective giving with women and these kind of funds was a new thing. So they got together and they formed this organization and it really isn't, it is another nonprofit, but when you join, quote unquote, join, or you're, you're a member, you, you aren't required to do anything but pay your $200. Mm -hmm. So you can, I yeah. mean, I'm a cabinet chair and Ashley, you're involved and yeah. I know you've been involved too. So 
you can do as much as you want or as little as you want and it's just a really neat way to take your small amount of money and, and make it grow. And I think the, the other thing too about the Women's Fund that's very interesting is from what I understand there is no paid staff. We have, have we do have one one and one she, to make this entire organization one. work. Um, it's mostly up and this is just recently. Mm -hmm. We hired a, a young woman who very limited hours. Yes, yeah. um, she really handles the membership part of it because that's pretty hard for it data is, yeah. collection that kind of thing. But that's that's it. Yeah, yeah, we our operating expenses are really not a lot. We try to have events that cover their own right. costs. So. Yes. which is huge because. Yes. Generally, you're worried about where your money's right. going in an, at a nonprofit, and I mean, it's pretty amazing that you guys have, in less than 10 years, you know, created. they've raised four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars in an endowment and given how, about how oh much my every gosh. year. Uh, we it it started out with like year. twenty-five thousand. Every year, it's gone up in about five thousand incrementally. So this year, forty-five thousand dollars in grants, and it's not, you know, there. And what I think is neat about the grants is, I was reading the list today for this interview and um, a lot of them go to educating women so they mm -hmm. can get better jobs. Yeah. It's right. all of the programs. There's just numerous ones now. It's like you teach them to fit. You don't give them the fish. You right, teach exactly. them to fish yeah. in many, many a, a instances. A hand up, not a hand out right. is the way we like to so think of it. So one thing that's unique about Women's Fund is the way that you come up with who you're giving money to. Yes. You want to tell tell our, our viewers a little bit well, about that? Well, we, we have a vote every year on a focus area. So we have focus groups who come together and um, discuss what's needed in the community. So fostering economic economic independence kind of thing is I think the one currently. Um, and then the grants are based on that. So this year we um, had I think about 10 grant applications and we will announce those in October but um, then then we kind of focus the grants around that. Mm -hmm. So it, and the grant process is done by a random draw of the people who are on the committee so it's not hand-picked by right. it, we don't the cabinet doesn't pick people to, to do that so it's really neat. The, I actually was drawn. It was was kind of interesting because I'm the guy in the cabinet chair and I get to do it. Um, <laughs> so it was really neat. So I, I was with, I think there was eight of us and mm -hmm. a really neat group of people that I wouldn't have met otherwise. So it's a really neat process. So I think one of the big things about that is uh, you should let the viewers know also that if they run an organization that has to do with women or empowering women or fam the families and children, I want to make sure I'm getting all this right. Yes. Um, that they can apply for these grants. And yes. That's why they're there. Yes, the grants come up about July or August every year. So we just did our grant cycle. We just chose them, mm -hmm. um, and they're through the Shasta Regional Community Foundation, which is our parent kind of organization. Yeah. And um, they are they you know they kind of need to focus on that area, but really it's about women and their families. Mm -hmm. So it's giving back to those women who need just a hand up. They need a little more education. They need some way to get their life back on track. Mm -hmm. What have you heard as far as feedback from your grant recipients? Oh my gosh, they're <laughs> thrilled. Um, they just, they're, they they take them, it was amazing to me because I think, oh, $10,000, you know, this doesn't seem like a lot, but what they do with that is just amazing. The film thing, they, um, the teeth, I mean, we would give them more, I think, but I don't think they can get that many women through that teeth, the res restoration process. Mm -hmm. um, that quickly, yeah. The, mm -hmm. There's a group in town called Chiba, which is, helps girls get their college, their high school education mm. and uh, they learn trades, their mm -hmm. construction. Some, oh, that's awesome. There was one at Shasta College that was, um, you know, non-traditional jobs, yeah. which, you know, I work for Caltrans, so how cool is that, that yes. I'm helping women <laughs> learn to run a backhoe and then that's they can right. come to work for Caltrans. That's so, right, that's right. Um, just, right. It's just well, a really neat organization. Through the community. Yeah. It's really important. Yeah. 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 It's a good, I mean, it's a great organization. I think it's nice for busy women, you know, to give to something, but then not feel as though they need to be part of a committee or they have to devote a lot of time. And, you know, and if you want to, you have the flexibility to be part of it and do more. One thing that I've noticed you guys do very regularly are these community forums. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, we've done some great forums. We've we've done a couple on the homelessness issue. We've um, done them on entrepreneurship, which I thought was really neat for women, mm -hmm. women who are going to go into business, it really encouraging them that they can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, we're, we're planning an, one for probably February about the human trafficking issue here in, oh, in Reading. Great. So great. We've had um, that guest of organizations working on that. Yeah, here on so the we show. try to hit, I mean, we can't, 
as a group, we can't go out and champion those causes, but we can help make awareness. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's one of our really good things that we do is that we, we do these forums and we get these big audiences and then we, we, you know, we tape them and they're shown again and, and we're able to um, facilitate that where a lot of groups can't and then we, we get them talking. I love, Denise, that you are part of this. This is not your job. No, this, this is, is not my job. This is a passion. For our viewers, we have a lot of viewers that love helping and getting involved in the community. How did you go about getting involved? Well, my dear friend, Kristen Trader, <laughs> um, kept trying to talk me into joining, and I was in Rotary, and I was on a school board. My kids were in school, and I was like, oh, you know. So I, I, I started helping her, just kind of on the side. And then I finally joined, and you know, I really, this is the one group I can honestly say that I've been a part of that I really feel like I see the fruit of my labor. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you, you see where that money goes and you see excitement over a film class that you learned. You see excitement <laughs> over their teeth being fixed or, or their ability to learn a trade. So I just really liked that about it and, and I, you know, I became cabinet chair quite quickly, but um, <laughs> uh, I think that's Funny how that a great job. <laughs> I think that's probably because I have a background of being involved in so many other groups mm -hmm. that I have the experience. But mm -hmm. that's you know, Kristen was really the catalyst for me, but then once I saw what they did I just was amazed. So I have one more question. Um, I just wanna I wanna make sure that the audience knows how much are those forums? Like can anyone attend those forums? Are they the forums are free. Uh, we have never charged for the forums. Um, anyone can attend. We uh, one that we had with Lloyd Pendleton from Utah about the homeless issue. I think we had 500 people there. Yeah. So um, yeah, they're always free. We've never had to charge. Um, we do charge for like the fundraiser that we're doing for the um, endowment right. fund, but in for some of our little events. But mm -hmm. that one, those forms are open to anyone. So how do people find out more information? We have a website. Um, just search the Women's Fund Reading, and it'll come up. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, you can um, call the, the Shasta Regional Community Foundation if you don't remember any of that. Um, <laughs> So just um, Women's Fund Reading, Reading. will give you it. Yes. Denise Jorgensen, thank you so much for coming on. It thank was just you. a delight to hear about it. Okay. Thank you for watching this first half. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back with you with the second half of the forum. We are back and we're talking with the executive director of the Shasta and Butte Art Councils. The executive director is Deborah Lucero and we're so happy to have you on. Thank you. That is a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to get it all out, but it was difficult. <laughs> you know, it's so appropriate to have you at the same time we had Denise from the I Women's know. Fund because you guys put on an event that the Women's Fund helped sponsor. That's true. The, the, so tell the, us what that is. Yeah, yeah, the film thing that women in film that, that, that Denise yes. was talking yes, about. Yes, yes, yes. Females in film. Females yes. in filmmaking. Yes. Which we, we thought was going to really appeal appeal to about a 16 to 24 year old demographic <laughs> and we got seven year olds and we got 10 year olds so good. and we got uh, a little older mature, people. Mature, <laughs> more mature, mature. More mature people. <laughs> yeah. But that's good because you know that shows the, the depth the of what you, yeah, of the interest that people had in your program. No, it was really true. It, tra it taught us a lot. Just the call to have people come. We realized there was a gap in the younger mm -hmm. age group mm -hmm. because they were wanting to do yes. it. And then having the older women, you know, in their 30s, 40s, 50s, mm -hmm. uh, also interested right. in this, um, we thought, well, it'll be perfect. We can have the older ones mentoring the younger ones. Yes. But really, it, the younger it ones mentored the older ones. They know ones. so, so more. <laughs> yeah. 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 They know so yeah. much now. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. And at the same time, I do think having a, a being there as a mature, more mature woman was really neat for the girls to see, oh, you can incorporate this kind of thing in your life. Absolutely. No matter what you're yes. doing. No, that's yes. true. You know, that as an really older, as an old, as, as I grow up. Can we stop? Right? Yeah, I'm saying, can we stop using the word yeah. older? older. She, <laughs> she grouped us all in there, 30s, yeah. 40s. 40s, 50s. I think we're just getting started. <laughs> there you go. I believe that too. All right, so, I'm with you. So tell us about the Arts Council. What role does it play? What exactly is it? Yeah. And uh, what kind of stuff are you guys up to? 
Well, Arts Councils were started 40 years ago, the first time Jerry Brown was in office. Mm -hmm. And so the Reading Shasta, it's actually called the Shasta County Arts Council, and we live in Old City Hall in downtown Reading, and we have a wonderful relationship with the city of Reading. Okay. So we actually um, schedule that building. There are more than 300 events in that building out Whoa. of 365 days wow. a year. So it's very used. Yes. It's going to be 100 years old next year. Wow. And so we have everything from ballroom dancing to Tai Chi to drumming. We have um, uh, anniversary parties, proms, So you rent concerts. out the building? Well, we rent yeah. out the okay. building and then we hold our own mm -hmm. events and then we partner sometimes. Okay. Like we just partnered with the Fire Reel Film Alliance right. to help bring their festival to fruition. Um, we're going to be partnering with the Axiom Repertory Theater out of Anderson to present three different plays, God of Carnage, oh, cool. um, Amadeus, and Marvin's Room with That's this fantastic. incredible theater company. So what arts councils do is they nurture the creative spirit in a community. I love that. And they also are really interested in education and arts advocacy. Um, I don't know if people are aware, but only about a third of all California schools have arts education, some mm. form of music, art. Very aware of that, yes. It's, wow. it's, it's really sad. So and do you offer art classes? We do. We, uh, we have teaching artists that offer arts classes. And we also really work with our school district. We have, uh, for 18 years, um, in the county of Shasta, we have done... Um, a juried high school visual arts program. Wow. And so um, that's our largest thing that we do. And, and we just started that same program in the middle school, thanks to a local teacher who was very interested in getting that off the ground. So we'll have wow. that as well. Can you explain exactly what it is that you do? You, uh, what, what all does that mean? Well, the kids, it's kind of like if you have gone to the local fair and you see the, their art up there and there are ribbons on the yes, art. Okay, yes. Well, this is a juried um, uh, competition. Okay. So we get working artists to jury more than 500 entries from 16 um, county schools. Wow. wow. And then we hang a, a little over 200 of those pieces. Wow. Um, it's sculpture, it's three-dimensional, two-dimensional um, pieces of art. And so we've just started that same concept for the middle school. Oh, that's We fantastic. also do Poetry Out Loud. Um, we just started that last year. It's a um, literature project and it's going to be a competition in the high schools wow. for the spoken word and we are looking for a poetry coordinator for that. <laughs> Why did she look at <laughs> She's looking for a poetry coordinator <laughs> if anyone would like to volunteer. Yes. Yeah, we really are. I mean, um, we get our lead from the California Arts Council. Okay. So the Shasta Arts Council has been around for 36 years. Um, in Butte County, we've only been around for about 16 years. Mm. So we're not quite as mature and we don't have as many programs and we're just connecting with the schools there even though we've been around for 16 years it takes a long time to connect with the schools Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so we have started there with an uh, after-school program for at-risk youth I love oh, it good and oh my so gosh. Good. they are learning digital media art skills yes. um, the Department of Labor has identified 55 jobs that are related to digital media arts oh whether gosh. it's being yeah. on a camera yeah. like these gentlemen mm -hmm. out uh -huh. here or if it's audio work or lighting work. Does that include like graphic design? Graphic design. Too? It also in, includes script writing, that's which Christy cool. went through the females yeah. in filmmaking. Yes. And you realize how many jobs there are. And yes. that's why those credits at the end are so long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it takes a lot of people to yes. make something yeah. really good. Absolutely. And you guys are there as a support, as a funder, as a guide, as an umbrella. Well, and we also do, and sometimes, so in, in Shasta, we haven't started our classes yet because we're, we're in a historic building, so everything we do has to go very slowly. And you <laughs> spent some time there, so it's, it's Yeah, a, internet was a little bit of a challenge. Oh, well, we yeah. just got that fixed. Thank okay, goodness, yes. good. But we have to go slow, because yeah. we can't drill holes in the wall, we right. can't uh, just slap something up, we can't change something. Um, so it, it's been a three-year process just to get our studio up and working there and we do have a full functioning studio now and we've just put in our classroom computers. Okay, so now, tell oh. us about that studio. You mentioned okay. you have a studio. What's it for and okay. tell us about that. So the Butte and Shasta Arts Councils were the first two arts councils in the state of California to run public access television. Mm. Not to be confused with public television like KIXE, which we are on right now, but community access is where you invite the community in to learn the skills of running a, a television station. Oh, that's fantastic. And we're on cable. So in, yes. in um, Shasta County, it's charter on 
in Butte County, it's Comcast. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we are cable casting. Um, we teach cable casting, we teach script writing, we, we do field production. Wow. Um, the so it's sort of like an internship. Yeah, it can. In fact, in Chico, we have 10 Chico State interns yeah, working yeah. for us. That's fantastic. And what type of programs do you put out? Well, um, you know, a lot of what television is turning into, we're watching it on our, you know, oh, our oh, phones, yes, yeah. we're watching yeah. it on our pads. I can go into a classroom at Chico State and ask how many students have a television, and out of 30 students, maybe five will raise their oh, hand. Oh, wow. So it's really a changing world. <gasps> That does, but that, that doesn't mean there isn't a need for content. It's totally, just about yeah. the delivery of the content. Absolutely. And so without um, learning the skills that you learn in um, a situation like KIXE or like the public access stations, mm -hmm. you're not going to have the people that are able to produce content. Because a good story is not just picking up your phone and going out and shooting and becoming a Absolutely, citizen yeah. journal sure. journalist. But, I mean, that's a start. So what we're trying to do is just take it one step further. Mm -hmm. And um, so that has been an exciting program. It's really expanded our horizons. We're located right in downtown in Chico, and we're also located downtown in Reading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that's just one of the things we do. Yeah, and we, you know. So you do a lot of different things, but right. how do you get the funding to do all of this? Yeah. Well, we write a lot of grants. Okay, um, that's great. It's a that's lot great. of grant funding. Yeah. Um, we do get funding through the public education government fees. Okay. So a cable subscriber will see on their bill a little, like, probably 45 cent charge. And that those funds go to the jurisdiction that they're generated in. So yes. mm. in the case of Reading, it goes to the city of Reading and they pass through to us those funds. But that does not pay for anything except equipment and um, capital improvements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So any kind of... But equipment is huge. So. Equipment is huge. Yes. And we do have very nice equipment. Okay. We have state-of-the-art equipment in both um, wow. studios and um, people are learning on, on the workflows that are being created today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have internet software um, that is being taught. We have a filmmaker out of Hollywood who has joined our team yeah. and, and he's really good on cameras. He's teaching the camera work and all of that. So what are they actually recording? Like what is the content that you actually Well in record? Chico we had <laughs> 11 original programs last year. Yeah. So and it was crazy. So the, we've only been a year old down there. And are they and like I, sitcoms or? We have everything from um, uh, let's see the kids show where they two kids talk about how they wish their parents were. Oh. <laughs> We have um, a, ben, a Ben's movie review show. It's a review that's show. Cute. Yes, um, and that's a weekly show. It's our longest running one. I think he's done 46 episodes at this point. That's wow. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, we have Christine McShane's uh, Step by Step. Yeah. And that is a step by step painting. In 28 minutes, oh. she'll create a masterpiece. Oh my gosh! It's pretty pretty wow. amazing. Wow. Kind of take the place of. The PBS guy with the hair. Yes, yes. <laughs> I forgot yeah. his name. Um, Ross, Bob Ross, Ross. Bob Ross. Bob Ross. That's pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh and, my goodness. But that's just you know again part of it. We also run festivals. Yes. Um, we we have a gallery in Reading. Which um, is I have to say, if you've not been to a gallery event, I think it's one of the finest art display locations in Reading. Wow. It's definitely. Really beautiful. I mean, yeah. it's on par with Turtle Bay. This yeah. fancy museum. It is. And here you've got these amazing. The way that you hang the paintings is just art in the two And where is that? In Old City Hall. Oh, it's in Old City yeah. Hall? Okay. Downstairs. And when does that generally happen? Um, we have uh, seven shows a year, so we have seven different openings. Oh my gosh. And if anybody wants to get in touch with us, we have a wonderful email list and we send out all the cultural and arts events happenings in both Shasta and Butte. Nice. And we didn't even get to talk about True North. Well, let's talk about it. What well, is True North? All right. Well, <laughs> True North, this is something we worked five years on because we're all very small counties okay. up here, yeah, right? Yeah. So True North is a consortium and alliance of five counties, Butte, Shasta, Trinity, Siskiyou, and Tehama. That's fantastic. Yeah. And Eight. what do you do? What is well, <laughs> we are trying to build capacity for all of these small arts organizations. Yes, I love it. Okay, so what we have done is for five years we've toured, toured musicians through there and now we're starting to work with visual artists mm. to learn the venues, to help these small places learn how to work with big names and I big love talent. It. Wow. And now we are officially recognized by the state of California as the True North Arts and Culture Alliance. 18,000 square miles. I have to give you a on that. That that's, is so that's exciting. Awesome. That's a lot of work. It is it a lot is of work. And yeah, it's a lot of expansion. Yes. yes. So 
Today, we've had such a great time talking with you, Deborah. Thank, Thank you. you. How can people find out more? Shasta County, well, ShastaArtsCouncil.org. Okay. We have a wonderful website. Or Friends of the Arts Upstate. Dot org okay. for Butte County. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for coming on. Thank We're you. out of time. It uh, went so fast. Oh my gosh, Thanks cool. for watching the forum. We hope you loved it. We loved having you and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time.